In this video, we will explain the origin of the town and its road system before Romulus, first king of Rome, to Constantino Emperor, along about 2000 years. The road system, especially the oldest one from the regions of the city, is closely related to a hydro-orographic form in a relationship of initial adaptation and subsequent overcoming. In this video, we will delve into the earliest path and human settlements in Italy, which utilizes the ridges of hills and mountains. The most ancient path and human settlement in Italy made strategic use of ridges, and for good reason. These hill mountain top routes offered practical advantages, making them a preferred choice for early settlers. A ridge path allows you to stay on a higher ground, avoiding the need to ford rivers or streams. It provides a broad view of the surroundings, reducing the risk of ambushes and hidden dangers. Additionally, settings on a ridge naturally provides a defensive advantage, enabling easy surveillance of the surrounding territory. At its inception, Rome was born at a convergence of three peninsular ridge systems the Etruscan, the Sabinians, and the Italic Latin ridge system. The systems came together at the Tiber River crossing, near the Tiber Islands, which would eventually become the foundation of Rome. The utilization of ridge paths played a pivotal role in shaping Rome's early history and strategic positioning. The Etruscan ridges converge on the city of Obeyo, which thus controlled the northern access to Rome. From Obeyo, a road starts which will later be converted by the Romans into a section of the Via Cassia and the Via Triumphalis. The road reaches the Tiber Valley at the ford of the Tiber River, which we will later become the Trastevere neighborhood. There was another main Etruscan route that connected Tarquinia and Cere with the Tiber Ford that will be later reused by Romans for the Via Aurelia. The Sabino Ridge reaches the Quirinal. The hill takes its name from Quirites, the ancient name of the Sabini, and the Campidoglio Hill above the Tiber Valley at the ford. The Latin ridge descends from the top of the Lazio Vulcano, Mons Albanus, where the most sacred places to the Latin's people was located, the sanctuary of Tusculum and that of Monte Cavo. The ancient roads are those of the Via Latina and the Via Tuscolana, which reach the Tiber Ford crossing the Murcia Valley, then Circus Maximus.
it is no coincidence that near the ford there are the remains of the Forum Boarium, the Cattle Market and Emporium, and the Forum Auditorium, at the base of the Palatino and Capitoline Hill. These are some of the archaeological areas that have brought to light the most archaic of Rome, the same place In the first phase of the genesis of the urban structure, a radial system of roads is defined, starting from the Tiber Ford to the Forum Boario, reaching the plateau summit, radiating throughout ancient Lazio along paths that connect the centers located in a circle, overlooking the Tiber Valley, connected with the roads named after the centers themselves. Some of these centers were already encountered in the video on the esoteric form of Rome, arranged on the axis of geographical alignments of the star. The road system include Etruscan Ridge, then Via Triumphalis and Via Cassia, Salaria Vetus, leading to Fidene and Crustumerium, a road along the Tiber River valley. Numentana from Numentum. Tiburtina from Tibur. Gabina Prenestina from Gabi and Preneste. Preneste was one of the most important sanctuaries of ancient Latium. Labicana from Labicus. Latina Tusculana from Tusculum, the location of the other sanctuary, and beyond until rejoining Labicana at Labicus. Ardeatina from Ardea Laurentina from Laurentum Between Ardea and Laurentum there is the ancient center of Lavinium, which legend says was founded by Aeneas after the destruction of Troy upon arriving on the shores of Latium. We will dedicate a specific video to these places. The Etruscan path from Tarquinia and Cere, then the Roman Via Aurelia.
there is a close relationship between the morphology of the place, the road and the settlement typology. Ridge paths generate ridge settlements. Some examples of rich medieval settlements of Etruscan origin, Tarquinia, Orte, and of Italic origin, Anagni, Ernici population. Valley paths generate valley settlements which serve as exchange centers at the intersection of the paths themselves, constantly located in the valleys. Villages were established on the top of the seven hills. Other villages grew on the slopes of the same hills. From the beginning, a hierarchy of paths is established. Rich paths are exclusively at the local scale. Valley paths are at local scale when paired with ridge paths. They generate bidenti viari, road forks leading to the city of Rome, as in the case of the Via Nomentana, a ridge path, and Vicus Longus, a valley path. The roads, at a larger territorial scale, constitute the exchange structures between the different populations Etruscan, Latin, Sabini. From its origins until the imperial era, the radial paths of the consular roads tend to gradually converge into a broad coordinated system. In the archaic period, the eastern radial paths Salaria, Nomentana, Tiburtina, Prenestina converge into a road fan with its edges constituted by the Via Salaria itself leading north and Labicana, then Casilina Road, leading southeast. The western road fan has its ages in the Etruscan paths arriving at the ford on the Tiber and the road of the Latin populations, the Via Latina. Both paths are linked by Sublicio Bridge on the Tiber, today named Ponte Rotto, Broken Bridge. This road fan is constituted by the roads that lead to the Tyrrhenian coast, Portuense, Magliana, Ostiense, Laurentina, Ardeatina. After the archaic period, Via Flaminia and Via Cassia, called Via del Corso in its urban stretch, widens the eastern fan of streets, previously delimited by the Via Salaria. The fan of the western roads also changes with the construction of the consular roads via Aurelia and via Appia, which form the new margins of the fan. The shape of these two fans is that of two hyperboles. The two primary systems, western and eastern, are now road systems composed of roads that reach the borders of the empire. The eastern hyperbole with the Cassia Flaminia roads towards the Nord Europe and the Via Casilina towards Capua and from there to Brindisi for voyages to the east or south to Sicily. And the western hyperbole with the Via Aurelia, a coastal uh, road up to Spain, and the Via Appia, an alternative road to Casilina up to Capua and forward, south and southeast. The two systems of paths enclose the area of the forums, giving rise to an overall structure in the shape of a double hyperbole, which constitutes the typical shape of the city until today. The two hyperboles are connected by three or more ancient paths 
linked to the origins of Rome. The Clivius Jugarius and the Clivius Tuscus, that are among Campidoglio and Palatino hills. And the road from Valle Murcia, then Circus Maximus, to the Colosseum, among Palatino and Celio hills. This shape establishes an effective relationship between the territorial road system and the urban system of the central areas, namely the open system of the forums which emphasizes the territorial dimension of the city. Rome's vocation to be a city projected and open to the world. This identified shape declined in the Middle Ages. However, even though used differently, the urban road structure essentially maintains its original layout until the urban intervention of 6th to 5th Pope in a Renaissance period. Sixth to fifth, in short, replicates the system of the double hyperbole with the Termini and the, the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore at the center, but we will discuss this in a video entirely dedicated to the urban planning of Sixth to fifth Pope. In an upcoming video, we will also discover the unexpected relationships between the road system and the esoteric star shape of the Eternal City. In the upcoming videos, we will explore and walk the two major hyperbole-shaped roads and the tributary roads to these main paths in their urban stretches starting about from the gates of the Aurelian Walls. We will thus discover unique relationships between places and monuments, from the most famous to the lesser known ones, from the most archaic memories until the present of the Eternal City. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, so you won't miss.